Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about cryptocurrency portfolio construction using modern portfolio theory. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we do videos on modern portfolio theory every few months. And the reason is because I want to show people various ways that you can go about trying to construct a cryptocurrency portfolio. There is a common misconception that there exists a portfolio that is right for everyone. However, there are portfolios that suit various risk tolerances. So what I want to do in this video is what we're going to start. We're going to start off by looking at the Sharpe ratio and the Sortino ratio for Bitcoin and Ethereum portfolios. And they're going to expand to a few other altcoins and see how they would affect your risk adjusted returns. To start, I should I should probably explain the the, the chart in, in great detail. The expected return is the Y axis and the volatility is the X axis. So if you want to if you want to see the expected return at say 0 0.7, that means your expected annual return would be 70% based on historical returns. Now, one important thing to point out as always is that historical returns are not necessarily always a great predictor of future returns. The secret sauce that a lot of hedge funds might use Rather than using historical returns to project out expected returns, they would probably make their own projected returns and use that as the expected return for various assets to try to figure out what portfolio would then maximize their risk-adjusted returns. So if you were looking for, say, an expected return of 75% annually on average, then you would, based on historical returns, then you would come over here to 75%, go all the way over until you find that portfolio that matches that return, which in this case would be about 27.6% Bitcoin, 72.4% Ethereum. Now, if you want to get a sense of the volatility of a portfolio like that, if you go down, you can see I actually correspond to about one, which is about 100%. So the expected return of that portfolio specifically based on historical returns would be approximately 75% plus or minus 100% meaning to within one standard deviation or a 68% probability, your expected return is going to be between negative 25% up to 175%. I know that sounds like a lot. Welcome to crypto, right? The volatility is insane. Some, you know, some years these assets can go up 10x and then other years they can go 90% down. So that's just the nature of the asset class. Again, don't take it up with me, take it up with the data. That's what the data puts it out, puts it out as. So, there's a few different things you can look at. So the first thing you might want to do for is figure out, you know, what volatility are you comfortable with, which is sort of like thinking like what risk are you okay taking on? If if you only want to take on a low amount of risk with respect to this portfolio, so you're already taking on some risk by just being in crypto in the first place. But if you want to be say like in Bitcoin and Ethereum only, you need to figure out what type of volatility are you okay with? At the lower end of the curve, right, you can see that you would have more Bitcoin. Like you can see over here, it's like 92% Bitcoin or 93% Bitcoin, 7% ETH. That gives you a relatively lower expected return, but it also gives you lower volatility as well. If you go up the efficient frontier, meaning you're, you're looking at higher expected returns based on historical returns, you'll see that the amount of Bitcoin as you go up becomes a less per, a lower percentage and the amount of Ethereum becomes a higher percentage. So if you go all the way up to the top, you can see that it would basically be about, you know, 100% Ethereum and, and basically 0% Bitcoin if you wanted to take on, you know, the, essentially the most amount of risk based on the historical performance of just these two assets, okay? One nuance I should mention, or a couple of them, one is that we can only use data going back to the youngest asset. So in this case, Ethereum has been around since 2015. So we can only really use price data from Bitcoin that's if, since 2015 as well. We can't really use price data from, from prior years because we don't really have anything with Ethereum to compare it to because it just simply was not around then. So that's an important thing to remember as well. The second nuance that I want to mention is that it says we're displaying 5,000 of 50,000 portfolio simulations. So the way you can think about this is a Monte Carlo based approach. 
to, to helping people visualize what the returns would be, that would probably cause you to question, well, does it mean that if you were to run another 50,000 simulations, you would come up with a different answer since it's a Monte Carlo-based approach? And normally the answer would be yes, you could come up with a different solution. However, in order to figure out what maximizes your risk-adjusted returns, in this case, the Sharpe ratio and Sortino ratio, what I've done is we, we actually have, have made it so that we, we use some quadratic programming to then actually solve for the portfolio that maximizes your risk-adjusted returns rather than having to go a Monte Carlo approach and just brute force it. So there's two ways you can look at the portfolio which maximizes your risk-adjusted returns. The way to think about that is for a given amount of expected return, you want to you want to basically maximize that per unit risk that you take on. So if you do this over all portfolios, there exists one that provides the best risk adjusted return. And we're going to start with the sharp ratio. And in the sharp ratio, the portfolio out of Bitcoin and Ethereum that maximizes your risk adjusted return is actually 68% Bitcoin, 32% ETH. So just over two thirds Bitcoin and just under one third ETH. Seems somewhat reasonable, right? And, and maybe that's what your gut would tell you, that a majority of Bitcoin would actually help maximize your risk adjusted return because yes, Ethereum can give oversized gains in, in bull markets, but it, it has also shown to, at least historically, to drop more in bear markets. Now, right now, it it's actually, you know, it's been holding the June lows for a while, but also recognize that when it hit that June low, it was actually down 80, 82% or something. And Bitcoin so far, this bear market has only gone down about 77% at its low. So that is something to consider. However, the the one of the issues with the Sharp Ratio, if you're unfamiliar with what the Sharp Ratio is, it's basically just um, you know, the return of the portfolio, you know, based on what you're expecting it to be, minus the risk-free rates, so like treasury yields, divided by the standard deviation of the portfolio's excess return. The excess return is the return you know, taking out the the return that you could get, just get from the risk-free rate. So thinking about it like that, it actually punishes positive volatility, which is not necessarily something that a lot of people want to do. If you're trying to figure out what portfolio is going to maximize your returns, your risk adjusted returns, you don't necessarily want to punish positive volatility, right? Like, are you going to be upset if, if there's a lot of volatility because the asset went up a lot? Probably not. So you can go with the Sortino ratio, which maximizes your risk adjusted returns, but only punishes negative volatility. And in that case, you can see there's a slightly different answer. In that, in that instance, it actually comes out to be 67% Bitcoin, 33% ETH. So about two thirds, one third in that situation. What this shows is really no matter how you measure it, you're essentially coming out with two thirds Bitcoin, one third ETH to maximize your risk adjusted returns, whether you punish uh, whether you punish positive volatility or not. If you don't really care about maximizing your risk adjusted returns, then you, you could say for a given volatility, what risk are you okay taking on? Perhaps it's 85%, maybe 90% volatility, 95%, whatever it is, you know, you, you could pick it and then come up here and then figure out what portfolio that would correspond to. And then you just live with the results. And also recognizing there's no sure thing. Past performance is not necessarily an indication of what's going to happen in the future. And and furthermore, um, you know, it, it's all it, the, the probability of occurring, even based on this chart, would be to within one standard deviation or a 68% probability that would be that return plus or minus the volatility that is associated with it. So just something to consider. And and you know, I, I can just sort of scroll through right here so you can see the portfolios, um, portfolio percentages that are on that certain volatility level in case you're interested in that. Now, it becomes a bit more interesting when you add in a few other assets, right? So like, let's add in Litecoin and let's add in Monero and let's add in XRP and then recalculate it and see what that gives us, okay? Now, if you do it like this, you'll see something that looks a bit more aesthetically pleasing, right? And the whole idea in this situation is that now, for a given volatility level, there's more than one portfolio that would correspond to that because there's so many different ways that you could um, run, you know, run these simulations with various weightings of five different assets. And so the idea is that for a given volatility level, there exists a single portfolio on the efficient frontier, which is this green line up here, that maximizes your risk adjusted returns. So for instance, if you wanted to say take on about 90% annualized volatility and you, you come up here 
and you see this one of these first portfolios, it says 21% Bitcoin, 2% ETH, 29% Litecoin, 4% Monero, and then 44% XRP. But the problem with that is the expected return for that 90% volatility level is only about 50%. And for the same type of volatility based on historical returns, you could come up here to the efficient frontier, okay? So you're taking on basically the same amount of risk based on the volatility of it. And the expected return though would be much higher. So in this case, it would be, you know, like 26% Bitcoin, 51% ETH, 1% Litecoin, 15% Monero, and 7% XRP, okay? Does that make sense, right? So. In this situation, there, there's there's multiple portfolios which correspond to that volatility level. Ideally, I think it would make sense to be on the efficient frontier, which is maximizing your expected return for that given volatility level. Okay, that is generally the idea. And in this case, we can also go over here and see what maximizes your sharp ratio or your risk adjusted returns, punishing both positive and negative volatility, and it would be 57% Bitcoin, 28% ETH. 0% Litecoin, 13% Monero, 2% XRP. People always get upset with me about the 0% Litecoin. Again, that's just what the data suggests. If you are a Litecoin fan, I will say the good news for you is that one of the best times that Litecoin typically has with respect to some of the other assets like Bitcoin and Ethereum is about half a year before it's having and the next having for Litecoin is coming up at about, you know, summer of 2023 or so. So perhaps you will see it slightly show some relative strength for a little while, but do note that that relative strength is usually short-lived sometime after the halving with respect to Ethereum. And it's not that Litecoin can't go up against its US dollar valuation in a bull market. It did in the last bull market, but it basically went to the same level that it went in 2017. It's just that the the opportunity cost of not putting that of not putting those dollars in say Ethereum that did go and put in new all-time highs and Bitcoin that also went and put in new all-time highs is actually quite high. So again, it's not that you can't make money on it in a bull market, it's what's the opportunity cost and is it worth having in your portfolio during a bull market if it means you're not seeing those same types, uh, if, if it means your dollars are not at work in other assets, which tend to give oversized gains with respect to Litecoin. But again, the you know going into Litecoin, having it, it can show a bit, a bit higher performance than it typically does otherwise. And the portfolio that maximizes your Sortino ratio is 48% Bitcoin, 36% Ethereum, 0% Litecoin again, 15% Monero, and 1% XRP. And then finally, the portfolio that minimizes your volatility would be 80% Bitcoin, 6% Ethereum, 1% Litecoin, 5%, there you go for the Litecoin fans, 5% Monero, and 8% XRP. So the whole idea is... You know, there's not a portfolio that is going to rule them all. There's not a portfolio that is going to necessarily make sense for every single person. There's a portfolio that makes sense for you. There's a portfolio that makes sense for me, okay? If someone's heavier Bitcoin, it just means they want to take on less risk. If someone's heavier ETH, it means they want to take on more risk. The, the you know, the expected returns and the volatility levels are there for you to see. You understand what it is, you know, what is the risk you're taking on based on what we've historically seen, and then you just live with what happens. If if it does well, yeah, you're. I don't think you're lucky. If I mean, I said this back in 2019, right? Like if you pick a portfolio out and you construct it, and and you end up making money on it, yeah, I don't. I don't think you're lucky. It's just you took a calculated risk and it paid off or it did it, right? It's just it's just a risk, and you got to figure out what you're willing to live with and what you're not willing to live with, and and. Um, and that's about, I mean, that's about as much as you can say with regards to portfolio construction using uh, using some of these tools. I mean, I, I hope you guys find this helpful. Uh, I do understand that this can be very dry and, and not very exciting. And there's probably a lot of other videos that are a lot more enticing. And for the 10 people still watching, I commend you. Uh, but these are the types of videos that we, we do a lot, um, especially, especially, you know, a year or two before hopefully another bull market because spending time figuring out the best way to construct a portfolio, it can make a huge difference later on, right? Like it, it doesn't really seem like it in a bear market, um, but it can make a huge difference later on. Small tweaks, right? Small per, per percentage tweaks in various assets can go a long way uh, once you get out to the bull market, just kind of looking at, at which ones are, are fundamentally stronger than the other ones, which ones have a track record of doing well, which ones do not, and so on and so forth. So again, the main takeaways from this are using modern portfolio theory to construct cryptocurrency portfolios 
via minimizing your volatility or maximizing your Sharpe ratio or Sortina ratio in order to um, uh, basically just maximize your risk adjusted returns for a, a given volatility. And, and that's about it. I mean, that this is this is why I've created this tool on the website. Again, this is modern portfolio theory. It's not something I created. It's been going back decades, but I put it on the website and applied it to a few older cryptocurrencies just so we kind of see how it performs. You might ask, well, why don't you have any newer cryptocurrencies? Again, this stuff really only works well if you have uh, usually at least a couple market cycles of data. Otherwise, there's just not really a whole lot to compare to. If if an altcoin that you're interested in has never experienced the full brutality of a bear market, then it just simply cannot be used, I think, in any effective way in modern portfolio theory, just because you don't really know the, the drawdown. Now, again, it, it could be used in a more effective way if you want to project out returns rather than use historical returns. But if you're if you're just sort of taking a more conservative approach and using historical returns, then it's not really that that valid if it hasn't experienced the full brutality of a bear market. Hopefully you guys like the content. Remember to check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium if you do. We do have several different tiers. So I know I know some people were asking about that. Make sure you check it out. Links in the description below. One of the tiers is actually free. So you can check that out. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.